All right, David Harry here. So I recently done a video showing some of the issues to do with the internal storage on Apple Silicon computers. This one here being an M4 Max MacBook Pro with a one terabyte SSD storage solution inside of it. Well, what I've done in two videos was to show the SLC cache limit for this one terabyte SSD in this Mac and also what happens once you start depleting that and how much slower the speed can actually get on the internal SSD. Well, just to further that a bit more and just to give a bit more example to what that problem really is, what I'm gonna do in this video is to use these two Thunderbolt 5 SSDs to like move data to one another and then I will then do the same thing again back to the Mac that I'd already done in the previous video and this will once again show you that I mean, well, the first thing is the external storage is faster for the start, and that's pretty disappointing after you spend all this money on a Mac. But also, I'm going to show that, you know, these issues are basically, like, reproducible consistently. So it's not just, like, picking one set of, like, you know, cherry-picked examples or anything. This is just going to show consistency no matter what we do once we have got fast enough external SSDs. So what I've got here is the TB501 by Acasus with a Western digital SN 850X inside of it and what I've got here is the Acasus TB501 with another 4 terabyte SN 850X by Western Digital inside of it so basically two Thunderbolt 5 SSDs with 4 terabytes in each of them or 80 gigabits per second SSDs whichever way you want to look at these things anyway let me just get into this and I will come back for a very quick summary at the end okay so I'm onto my MacBook Pro here and as we can see it is the M4 Max now I'm just going to show you the condition that its internal storage drive is in, as in it is a one terabyte variation and it has got 783 gigabytes spare, so almost 800 gig spare. Now that's important to show you because I will be replicating that test again where I copy to the internal storage after I do the first test of going from Thunderbolt 5 to Thunderbolt 5. Now as far as the drives are concerned, the top one here, this is the TB. 501 Acasus enclosure with the SN850X 4 terabyte in and then the second one is the newer Acasus TB501 Pro with the same you know Western Digital SN850X inside at the 4 terabyte these particular Western Digitals I think are just absolutely fantastic for these fast external enclosures so what I'm going to do here is open up activity monitor going to open up the first SSD and then there's the second SSD. Now I'm going to time this, but this is not to do any manual bit rates, you know, or anything like that. This is just to show you the time difference between going Thunderbolt 5 to Thunderbolt 5, then from Thunderbolt 5 to the internal storage. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is show you what this folder consists of. It has got 500 thousand megabytes of data in it which is 500 gigabytes and it consists of 1563 items which is a mixture of small files and large files so what i'm going to do is drop this over to here click start on the stopwatch like i said the stopwatch is only here just for like you know a comparison of final timings it's not for doing manual bit rate uh, you know calculations however as we're going to see here we are going to maintain a high data rate or bit rate during this transfer and as we could see there it actually will get up to about six gigabytes it's going to vary a little bit due to the nature of the data being transferred and such but as we will see it's going to be high and the graph is basically going to stay high and stuff like that the whole point here is just to show you that we will not deplete the slc cache and we will not lose performance during the transfer so what i'm going to do is just quickly speed through this and get until i get towards the end and i will get a quick timing on here okay i'm going to come back in here and get ready to hit pause once that data has moved, it's moved there. Okay, so that took one minute and 27 seconds. Let, let me just make a note of that. Like I say, I'm not gonna do any manual bitrate calculations, but this is just to show you the difference now from, you know, from this movement to when I move the data to the desktop. Okay, so as we could clearly see there, the movement of that data was all very high and there was no issues. We didn't breach any SLC caching and there was no slowdowns whatsoever. 
Now, in the previous test, I had actually used this SSD to copy the 500 gig folder to the Mac's internal storage. Now, just in case anybody might have been thinking, well, maybe it's your external SSD could have been an issue. Well, we've already seen it isn't because it maintained the actual high bit rate as far as its read was concerned in order to write it to this SSD. However, what I'm going to do just to rule out the first SSD is this time I'm going to copy the 500 gig folder from the second SSD to the internal storage. So this will have been two separate Thunderbolt 5 systems doing the exact same thing and we are going to see the exact same problem so let me just reset the stopwatch I'm just going to drop that folder there and hit start okay so as we're going to see here the folder is going to be about 400 megabytes around that three to four hundred megabytes faster than its data transfer initially which is I've got to say obviously very impressive However, there is no point in having that type of speed when it suddenly plummets and then extends the actual time that it takes to move the folder. So I'm just going to talk a little bit here until we hit the point where the SLC cache has been depleted and then we will see the bitrate drop. And what we're going to notice is that that, drip, that that drop in the bitrate, it'll vary a little bit. There we go. We've hit the drop now. Now, at this point here, you might think, well, that's not bad, and it isn't. Then suddenly it goes down to a gigabyte. Now, at certain points here, this is going to go down into the hundreds of megabytes as it's transferring. We see this little bump sometimes every now and then, but it quickly goes away. Then it'll come back down and settle to the lower speeds and what have you. And like I say, we will definitely see, like, you know, variations going really low here. Now, what I'm going to do is just to speed up, you keep an eye on what's going on here. Then I'll just come back in at the end and hit pause once it's actually transferred over. Okay, I'm going to come back in here. I'm not entirely sure how long it's going to take, but it should be finished soon. But as we can see, we are already over twice the length of time here. In fact, we're well over twice the length of time. But let me just let it complete okay it's done it now so as you can see there you know it, it's taken about well it's actually taken more than two minutes longer so when i done the thunderbolt 5 to thunderbolt 5 that was one minute and 27 seconds but this is now well over twice the length it's over it, it's twice the time plus about nearly 40 seconds anyway let me get on to an end summary actually just before i do that let me just do one of the quick tests here whilst i'm here okay so as we can see i've got 283 gigabytes spare now so what i'm going to do is to copy over this 100 gigabyte folder and look what happens in fact let me just quickly show you there is 100,000 megabytes 100 gigabytes 99 items okay so let me just pop that over and what we are going to see here is look at this now it is already immediately dropped down to like you know 2.6 gigabytes now it's dropped down further again and this is going to maintain this fluctuation so although we have got well enough space to copy that 100 gigabytes into we have now hit a point where the max storage is just going to be really slow look at this we're down to hundreds again and we actually went down to hundreds during the 500 gigabyte move now I'm not going to go any further with this particular test here but as we can see we are clearly really slow now with this 100 gigabyte movement and to be clear we had well enough space to move that 100 gigabytes into but not only have we depleted the SLC cache but the long term NAND is really slow as we can see with the movements of this 100 gigabyte folder. Okay so to an end summary and this is just going to consist of only two things so the first thing is to give almost a pre preemptive answer to some of the things that might be asked about this video because I've had similar questions asked about previous videos and they go along the lines of who really moves 500 gigabytes of data in one go and you know things like that well whilst I appreciate that that is not a regular day-to-day -day task for a lot of people what you have to understand is that these types of videos are designed to show stress tests and stuff like that and without those stress tests we wouldn't know how far we can push certain things so it's all well and good saying that you wouldn't do certain things on a daily basis however when it comes to needing 
anything to do with certain something you would have to know where the boundaries are in order to be able to do those things hence why i do some videos like this which are clearly just testing things like you know really too far for most people but testing them to a degree where we have to know you know where those boundaries are so as i've proven now in a number of videos you know we do have slc cache limits which we have to be really aware of on these m4 apple silicon devices now you also have to remember this is something that i brought up was it nearly four months ago now when the m4 macbook first come out i brought that up in a video but had to wait until i had two separate uh, you know very fast ssds so that i could rule out one might have been an issue and indeed it's not the external ssds it is indeed the internal storage so this is something that i had found out like what four months ago i showed it in a video but i didn't quite have all the conclusive evidence to prove that it was the mac button now i do and that's why i've been showing doing these things with like you know different sources so two different ssds to do them with anyway like i say the bottom line to these videos is just to give people an idea as to you know the limits of these things and what you could reasonably expect to get away with you know with certain configurations of mac now the second point that i want to get to here is um i'm probably going to do a video within the next few days days which is kind of like the, the culmination of a bunch of the videos that i've done and to be honest it's not going to be any more testing of like you know speeds and stuff like that it's literally going to be my opinion of why max storage is very it, it, it's what we just simply don't get value for money with max storage bottom line okay uh, the what we're paying for the internal storage on these computers is outrageously priced and like i'll do a video which is based you know on explaining why i think it's outrageous and also the to give the examples of the previous videos to show about the speeds and slc and stuff like that and also right now what you're gonna have to remember is the internal storage per terabyte on one of these macs is roughly five times the storage price of the storage that's inside one of these very fast thunderbolt 5 ssds so that's going to be the starting point for that next video and the conclusion to that is going to be we should be expecting a lot more from apple for the money that we pay for our macs and also the storage with inside them anyways there will be amazon links and whatnot to everything used in the video in the description below if you've liked the video please do give us a thumbs up a sub to the channel would be absolutely awesome I'm David Harry, thank you very much for watching this video, take care and goodbye now.